Welcome to a Thrix Sudden Storm Deck Tech, baby. In this video, we're walking you through Mono Blue, Big Boys. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, PZ, and that makes us the nitpicking nerds. Before we get into the video, real quick, we have to say, hey you, subscribe. And besides, you want to be a subscriber to this channel because our subscribers are 10% less likely to get caught in a sudden storm. This claim I got here. Just want to say a subscription to a YouTube channel that don't help control the weather. So why are we doing a Thrix deck? Because Austin Blankenship donated on buymeacoffee.com where you can support us too with a virtual tip jar. And he donated there and he said, hey, I'd really like to see this awesome commander. I want to see your take on it. And we're like, you know what? We can do that for you. We don't have a steadfast rule for tipping to commander tune-ups type stuff, but it, we just figured we'd do it. He wanted to, we needed a spot. Great. Yeah. I mean, everything just worked, worked out. out. It all worked out. So this what deck. Is, what is this deck? Oh, this deck's cool. This is mono blue cost reduction. Cost reduction, tribal, and big boys, as I'm going to keep saying. Yeah, I mean, obviously Trix cares about big boys. Why don't we read him and see why we care so much about big boys? Oh, yeah. Thrix Sudden Storm. Three blue blue for a four five flash flying spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater, can't be countered, and cost one less to cast. This card's sweet. Why don't we go over the ruling? Some people might be confused between Thrix and an X spell. Uh, Thrix and an X spell is really interesting. You declare the cost. So if you have four mana and a Thrix out, and you want to cast, uh, let's say, just for example, pull from tomorrow, X equals three. You declare it as X equals three, it's reduced by one, so you only have to pay two into it, but it costs five, it's a five, it still has a five CMC, and can't be countered. If you declare how you're casting it, I'm casting it for five mana. Thrix says, cool, can't be countered. And then you pay this, the, what the spell would actually cost after you check the reductions and stuff. Yes, so let's get into our first category. Cost reduction, this is every card in the deck that's gonna reduce the amount of mana spent to cast our spells, in addition to Thrix. Thrix is making our big things cost less, these are making them cost almost nothing. Sapphire Medallion is the first one. It costs two for an artifact. Blue spells you cast cost one less to cast. I mean, that's simple. This, this is, is the best one. That, your whole deck is blue with 10 exceptions for um, colorless stuff. Yeah, like this next one is also a colorless spell. Helm of Awakening. All spells that anyone cast cost one generic less. And it says generic on the original printing. Yes, this is a little dicier. You can wait on this one. Maybe they make this one the last one you play. Because you don't want anybody else storming off because of this thing. This card's really good. It's a re it's really good. Basically, Helm of Awakening should be in your deck if you think you can cast more spells than anyone else. Which, wow, we're not trying to, actually, this deck. This, this, deck is, <laughs> this deck's a little janky. I was, and cost reduction tribal, we don't have many options, okay? This is in the deck. I just thought it was funny that it doesn't apply to this deck. No, it doesn't. <laughs> but we think you can cast bigger spells sooner than anyone else. Yes, we're trying to cast big, huge dummies. So. I don't think many people who play Magic have heard of Stone Calendar. I haven't. I never had either. I just looked, we were researching how to make this deck, and it just showed up when I was searching cards. All right, read it. Five mana artifact from the dark, I believe. <laughs> Spells you cast cost one less to cast. Never heard of that card. Never heard of that card. It can't be countered because of Thrix. It costs four mana because of Thrix, and then it makes all your other spells cost one less. Interesting. It's, I don't know. Five mana is a little, I'm not playing that card, but four mana, you know, I start to get into it, start to think more. Next, we have the Immortal Sun. Oh my goodness. Did you forget that this made your spells cost one less to cast? So the full wording on this card is uh, the Immortal Sun, six mana artifact, legendary actually, legendary artifact. Players can't activate the ability of Planeswalkers. At the beginning of your draw step, draw an additional card. Spells you cast cost one less to cast. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. This is so many little tiny things that I think makes it just end up being worth it. Also yeah. can't be countered, also costs five mana. I mean, it's just on Planeswalkers. That's pretty good. I mean, there's a, people love to try and shove Planeswalkers into EDH. They definitely do. How many Elspeth Suns Champions have you seen? Because I think that card isn't even that good. It's not very good. It's not very good, but it just, it's, it's all over the place. What's next? Uh, oh, well. Next is Baral, Chief of Compliance. One in the blue for a legendary creature. I don't know his creature types. He's a 1-3. Um, <laughs> Human advisor? Maybe. Sure. Yeah. No, that's it. Yeah, sure. <laughs> sure. That's right. Um, I'm fixing it in the video if it's not. Um, uh, instant and sorcery you cast costs one less to cast. Whenever you counter a spell, you can loot. Draw a card, and it is card card. This is cheap, this comes down early. It blocks little guys, 
It just sits there and makes your spells discounted, and occasionally you get a free loot for no mana. Yeah, well, I mean, this card's awesome. It's awesome to just have free loots for no mana. Talk about uh, dicey, dicey cost reducers. Uh, here's the riskiest one: arcane melee, four and a blue, three and a blue with Thrix. Enchantment, instants and sorcery spells cost two generic less to cast. It costs four and a blue. Yeah. Dang, I didn't even realize this cost five mana. Yeah. All and right. Can't be countered, and it costs four mana with Thrix. And oh boy, make sure you're casting stuff right away with this, or Don't no one else. Ca maybe, maybe no one else cares. Creature decks are really common. Oh yeah. Well, well there's decks. an Elfball deck, and there's a Derevi deck, or something like. Well, you're not gonna. They're not gonna really abuse this as much as you are. Yeah. I mean, your deck's really gonna abuse this. Uh, what's our next category here? Well, I would say a note of when to play cost reducers. Make sure they're either going to generate mana in addition to paying themselves back. So Saffron Medallion pays itself back when you generate three mana. And then you want like arcane melee. Do you want to be able to cast something that gives you two more cards than it would have? Or two more mana's worth. Like you need to get three spells before arcane melee is like, okay, I've gotten my, my mana back. Exactly. Um, don't, don't just kind of play it. So our next category here though. Big boys. This is the best spells in the deck, creatures or otherwise, that cost five or more, which won't be countered. And I'm not gonna say this again. They cost one less. You're gonna say they can't be countered every time. No, you've you've said it for every spell. I've decided to stop. Okay, that's good. Our first one is Consecrated Shrinks. This is a this is four blue blue for a four six flyer. Le it's not legendary. It's just a creature cool. sphinx. There's lots of creature sphinxes running around, obviously. If that was legendary. Be an annoying commander. It'd be in the top 20 <laughs> commanders of all time, probably. Uh, no. Have you seen the art on that card? Not good. Oh, he's got a little shriveled head. Yeah, the art's not good. Okay, what does it do? Uh, whenever an opponent draws a card, you draw two, or may. You may draw two. Okay, I'm in. This card's great. I mean, what, as soon as you pass once, you feel like you already kind of got there. I mean, he, he divinations right away. Then if, not divination. Divination, if anyone's drawing extra cards, Divination. Once you get four off this, you're just living the dream. And if they can't kill it, you probably win. Especially with the amount of like huge game-winning spells in this deck, which we're trying to make cost as little as possible. The power of end stop Thrix into Consecrated Sphinx oh, is man. soup. That's just a strong play. I mean, you can just hold up counter spells at that point. You're just gonna have mana left over with these cost reducers out. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, next, the Luvan Primordial, five blue blue for a five five flyer. When it enters the battlefield. You can target an instant sorcery in each opponent's graveyard, cast it without paying its mana cost, and they're exiled. These are just huge, like, they're just gonna get you a third of the way, halfway, maybe just win you the game. Oh, yeah. For a very little investment, and we're, we're cheating them out. This is just a great card. Again, you're reducing the cost already, then casting free spells, you can get- This, this is a card that just pays for itself immediately. Oh, yeah, this card is, it's rough sometimes, because it costs seven mana but it's much better when it costs six mana, or five mana, or four mana, or three mana, or potentially or blue, two. blue. I don't know, can we get that low in this deck? Nope. I didn't think we'd get it to blue, blue. No, because we got Sapphire, Helm, Stone Calendar, Immortal Sun, and that's uh, four less, and uh, Bricks makes five less. So yeah. Oh, we can get, we to, blue. get it to blue, blue. We can, we can get we to blue, blue. We live the dream. <laughs> it's a real, that's a real living the dream. Yeah, okay, no, well, this, this get... is like a mixture of the, of Consecrated Sphinx and I don't know. It's Neza Hall Primal Tide. Five blue blue for a seven seven. Five blue blue for a seven seven. It can't be countered. Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you draw a card. You can discard three cards, exile them until the next end step. And it comes back. And it comes back. Yeah, that's true. It's unkillable. It's gonna replace itself almost immediately. No one's gonna try to kill it because it just can save itself. And I've never really not wanted to save this. Oh, that's all super. I love this card. I, I have it in a deck. I have it in Maelstrom Wanderer. It, it feels great. It just is, is a fun, super It's not good. like broken or anything. It just feels good. It's going to just generate you, generate your cards forever. And it's got such a good 7-7, seven, seven, nice 7-7 seven, seven body he's in people. it. He's a big boy. Though, he looks like he's just a little snake head. Because he's like bodies way in the background in that picture and his snake head's coming to the... Yeah, he's a, the grown-up Mystic Remora. <laughs> he is, yeah, he's a grown-up Mystic Remora. What's next? Oblivion Sower. Six mana for a 5-8 Eldrazi. When you cast it, target opponent exiles the top four cards of their library. Then you may put any number of land cards they own from exile, in general, onto the battlefield under your control. This is Blue Ramp. I absolutely, absolutely love the fact that on this card, <laughs> it's all of their exile lands. So if they have 
So if like somebody cracked their article progenitus, this, you just so a, happen to get five extra lands. It's so hilarious. I, I love that that could happen. Oh, it has happened. I've seen it. It's just super common. It's also a, like a weird deck. Thing. This is this is gonna be. Um, it's gonna get you probably two lands, and they go into untapped. So this spell can easily be free. Thrix makes it go to five. Two things puts it to three. Oh, you get three lands. It's free. Virtually. You get a little lucky, you spent no mana. You can't, five, you eight. Can, yeah, we can reduce this cost on the one. We've gone over this. We've gone over this? Oh, no, we can't. No, we, but it itself, every land reduces its cost. Do you actually pay for this thing? Yeah, that's true. Well, while ramping you. Well, I mean, we can get the actual cost down to two. Yes. Three. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what else? <laughs> yeah, okay. Kozilek, Butcher of Truth is 10 mana for a 12 12. When you cast it, draw four cards. When it attacks somebody, they cry, and they sacrifice four permanents. And then if it dies, you shuffle your whole graveyard into your library. That's, this card is ridiculous. Um, do we need to say why Kozilek's like, good? No, it completely can take somebody out of the game right away, costs very little mana, can't counter the, the card draw. It's great. Mind's Dilation, you love this card. Uh, Mind's Dilation costs five blue blue for an enchantment. Whenever a play, an opponent, whenever an opponent casts the first spell of each turn, they reveal the top card of the library. If it's a non-land card, you may cast it without paying its mana cost. This is going to hit some lands. It's 50-50 on whether you're going to get an awesome spell or a dud. Or a land. But it just sits there, and it accrues value, just like something like Nezahal, and we can play it for cheap. I'm going to keep saying it. Something that's great about this card is my favorite thing that's ever happened is hitting a counter spell. They cast a spell to, like, kill it. Hits a counter spell. Yeah, oh, nature's claim. <sighs> nah, counter spell. Oh, sorry. Shouldn't. Sorry, bud. And then you're going to guarantee to get at least one card out of it, because you're not going to play this into Kasali Pride Mage or Caustic Caterpillar. So you're gonna get something out of this. I mean, yeah, duh, you're who? That's what I'm saying, you're always <laughs> gonna get a spell out of this. I like how you, <laughs> we have to help you guys out. Don't, don't do that. Don't play it into free removal, <laughs> where they can get like a six mana advantage on you. Don't play it into Aura of Silence, that would hurt, that's the worst feeling. Oh, Aura of Silence? Gross. Then it costs two more. After you reduce it to, and now you're just like, well, it's cost <sighs> seven? I don't wanna cast Yeah, that's just like the original card, I don't wanna play the original <laughs> card. We're gonna go through these fast. Dig Through Time and Treasure Cruise. They're just, they're delving, they're gonna draw you cards. They cost nothing, I mean, that's even right. normally, but now they can't be counted. That's just simple. Yeah, Rush of Knowledge, four and a blue, sorcery, draw cards equal to the highest cost among permanents you control. <laughs> this is the, this is the stale crouton. This is the jankiest card in the whole deck. Oh. It sucks. You can get rifted or board wiped or spot removal out of a bunch of cards or all your cards, but we can get the cost down enough, I think, to make it, if this was three <laughs> mana, I'm in. Yeah, uh, another card that we're talking about drawing lots of cards. Flow of ideas costs five and a blue. Draw cards equals the number of islands you control. This card is so underrated. This is like one of the, my favorite ways reasons to play mono blue. Oh, it's such a good mono blue card. You draw so many cards. It's you... like eight or 12. It, it depends on where the game goes. I mean, even if you cast on turn six and you have six islands, this card's great. You just six minute draw six, I'm in. Especially when it gets reduced, obviously. And the last one, oh, we have spell swindle, three blue blue, counter spell, and then you get treasures equal to its mana cost. This can be, Better than Mana Drain. In the stack, yes. Legit. And the, the, the treasures help you cast big fatties even if you don't have cost reducers. Also, there's something to be said for a spell that is a counter spell that can't be countered. Counterflux is a good magic card because it can't be countered. Counterflux sees a bunch of play. Maybe I'd argue too much play, but it's got, it's got utility and does a thing. I mean, it's very useful. Being able to counter a spell without your spell being able to be countered is huge. It feels good. You feel safe. You're like, I'm going to save this for when I need it. All your spells do that. How about this one? Commandeer. This costs five blue blue. Gain control of target... Non-creature spell. Non-creature spell, I thought so. Of target non-creature spell. But here's the thing. If you it can, becomes a permanent, you gain control of the permanent. You can also remove two blue cards from your hand and cast it for free. Yeah, eggs out two blue cards to cast it for free. We don't even care. That That's just bonus because we're casting this thing for like three mana and it's going to be great. And another thing with this card here is... It can't be countered because of Thrix. Yeah, free counter spells that can't be countered or maybe just cost three mana and are amazing and don't cost you two cards. Well, this next card is just stupid. Yeah, these these big boys, they're just gonna take over the game right away. If you resolve these spells, you're a favorite to win. And we're just gonna keep doing it over and over. What's the, and the last one is silly. Bribery is such a good card. Yeah, like I said, <laughs> resolve a cheap spell, you know, get a like free win or something. I, I mean, this one is three, Blue, blue. Uh, look at, search target opponent's library for a creature, put it onto the battlefield in your control. 
How little mana can we pay for their best creature? That's such a good card. Oh man, I love, I don't like this card. You hate bribery. I hate this card. I but this deck warrants a bribery. This is the this is where you go, no holds barred. The best five mana plus blue cards I can find, bribery's one of them. Bribery is just a very good card. Yes, and we mentioned Thrix is very, very good with X spells and he wants a bunch of them. There's actually not that many playable X spells in blue, so here's pretty much all of them. Uh, blue Sun Zenith, X, blue, 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 uh, draw, target player, actually. Yes, target, player. target player draws X cards, then after resolve, shuffle back into your library. Great, we'll just kind of run through these because most of them are the same. Pull from tomorrow is X, blue, blue, draw X cards, and then discard one card. Stroke of Genius, two, blue, X, target player draws X cards. And then Finale of Revelation is gonna need some reading. Thrix is gonna help you get to this. X, blue, blue, sorcery, draw X cards. If X is 10 or more, instead, shuffle your graveyard into your library, draw X cards, untap up to five lands, and you have no maximum hand size for the rest of the game. That's an achievement. We're shooting for that. Yeah, so it's, if you pay 12 mana okay. for this, you draw 10, untap five lands, and you have no max hand size. And you shuffle your graveyard in. That's so good. It's like, that's gonna probably get you the game. Hey, know what's, know what's possible with this deck? What? You could cast it for five mana, but X will be 10, and then untap all the lands you used. Oh, for free? Oh man. It could, it could potentially be a free spell. Wow. I, I, the one thing I did not do with this deck is get nifty with cloning the, the cost reducers. So you could throw Fraxy Metamorph, Mirror Maid, Clever Impersonator in here. Helm of Awakening? What do you mean? Not Helm. Helm of the Host. Helm of the Host? No. Helm of the Host? We're not Helm of the Hosting. That's boop, 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 a bunch of commanders. That's stupid. No, I don't like that. <laughs> Why? It's way too expensive for, you spend nine mana to make your spells cost one less. Shut up, we're allowed to do Helm of the things. Host doesn't even cost five, it costs four. <laughs> you don't even get a reduction. <laughs> Terrible. Yeah, but if it costs five, it would cost four. It's the same thing. No. <laughs> with, with Curse of the Swine, X blue blue, exile X target creatures. For each one, they get a 2-2 green boar. Then Gaddick the Wizard, his legendary creature, 3-3, three, three, X blue blue blue, draw X cards. When, when he enters. enters. What? When he enters, draw X. When he enters, draw X cards, and whenever you cast a blue spell, tap target creature and opponent controls. I, I think that's that's pretty relevant other text. This thing can be cast for one or two and still have an impact on the game. I mean, it's just, it's gravy. It is gravy. Because all you gotta do is cast Gavik for like three. You're starting to draw like four or five cards. Yeah, he's a, he's a good Oof, card. Gets uh, great. But we, we gotta win the game. These, so a lot of these creatures, if left unchecked, will just totally run away with the game. But we have, these are more seal the deal type cards where they're, we're probably gonna win if we get to do this stuff. I mean, this this first one I would say is not as much shield. This doesn't. This is the biggest boy. This card is awesome. I mean, I would agree that this card is very awesome. There's no boy bigger than this. That's not true. And it's, have, a, it's a little girl in the art. We literally have a spell right after this that is bigger and costs more. This Go away. The, that that's probably the gourmet bagel. This is the second biggest boy. What is this? It? Is my favorite card in the deck. Not close because I love this card. Okay, what is it? This is Amanatu's augury. It costs six blue blue. For a sorcery, you reveal the top eight cards of your library. You can put any land from among them into play. Then, for e every type, you can do one. A sorcery, an instant, a creature, a planeswalker, an artifact, an enchantment. Can you do a tribal? I, actually, I don't think so. I don't think you can do tribal, but whatever. Get all those cards. It's potentially, you can get literally everything. You, all you can cards. basically get every card we mentioned in the big boys category, like one of each of those types, and just Chuck them out. You're gonna get like four rock solid hits and a land off this. Oh. And we're not paying eight for it. No, no, no. But you know what the best spell to hit off of this is? <laughs> Expropriate, it's the next winning the game card. It's not fair, it's seven blue blue. Each player votes time or money. If they vote time, you take an extra turn. If they vote money, you get their best permanent. You yourself have to vote time because you don't want your best permanent because you already have it. This card's insane, this card's so good and so worth nine mana. There's not this many- This is just nine mana. Very close to win the game. I've never seen a card be this close to win the game. I'm not counting, like, cast it, you win. It's very, 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 very good. Yeah, requires no deck building, requires no subtlety, strategy, really. You can just kind of like, as soon as you can play this, you just play it. And it's even it's so good in this deck, because Thrix just... You can't, they can't stop it, and it <laughs> doesn't cost nine. Yeah, it's such, well, These it's... are the cards you want to cheat out. This deck looks pretty strong. Yeah, I mean, I think this deck would be really annoying to play against. Uh, if you left, if you leave them unchecked, 
they can just hold up mana, pass. If no one does anything crazy, you flash in Thrix. If they do, you respond to it, and then if they flash in Thrix, you're screwed, because they're just gonna play some annoying thing. Uh, so the next one we have, well, we have a lot of X spells, so we can draw a lot of cards, potentially draw our whole deck. We have Nexus of Fate in the deck. Nexus of Fate as the, well, it's a big boy. Honorary big boy, cost seven mana. Mm -hmm. Take an extra turn, that's great with huge, giant monsters. And it just can be an audible, like, whoa, I really tried everything, or I have a ton of mana and X spells. I win. I'll take infinite turns. It's the last card of my library. I mean, you can just, the potential blue sunning, blue sunning, like, draw it again. Blue sun, two turns in a row, now you're just like, your deck's getting real thin. It is similar to blue sun. It's like, make you draw 25 cards, it's the last card. And then, you know, if they don't kill you, then you make them draw 25 and they lose. One of the best things to hit off of Amanatsu's Algorithm is an extra turn spell. You get all that value of all those things you have to play, and then you get the extra turn to use all that stuff. It's well, so good. I'm not too sorry, plus extra turn spell is just build your own expropriate. Oh, I get the best things from the top of my deck, and then I get to use them all next turn, Yeah, which I, is my turn. I am such a huge fan of I'm not too sorry. It's fine, I, I like it. It's janky and big and huge and swingy, so it's it's cool. And the art's amazing. The art is really good. She's blowing moths into people. On top of that, the art's amazing. Like, that's, that's- Top eight cards of her library, they're all moths. So she, <laughs> that was a terrible, I'm not too sorry. Now what's next? Temporal Trespass. It's eight blue, blue, blue for a sorcery. Delve. Take next turn. Exile this thing. Eh, extra turn spell. Hit it off five. It's, not it's blue, blue, blue. We're never paying more than blue, blue, blue. Ah, that's why it's good. For multiple reasons. You get it. And the Mirari Conjecture. I love this card. It is four and blue for an enchantment. Sa uh, saga. Chapter one. You get an instant back, which is probably going to protect this thing. Honestly. Chapter two, you get a sorcery back, and then chapter three, uh, when you cast an instant or sorcery spell this turn, copy it. Do we have any good instant or sorceries? I hope you've been paying attention, because yeah, we do. We have lots. Uh, last of all, we have Narset, who is a planeswalker for one blue blue, enters with five loyalty, static ability, opponents can't draw more than one card each turn. Minus two, look at the top four cards of your library, you get a non-creature spell from among them, non-land, non-creature. Put it into your hand. Reveal it, put it in your hand. You gotta, you gotta show your yeah, opponents. This thing replaces itself and that is an annoying stack, spa, stacks piece for your opponents. And then we just have another card that combos with to end the game on the spot. Echo of Eons, four blue blue for a sorcery, time twister, each player shuffles their graveyard into the library, draw seven. And then it's flashback for two and a blue. And when you flashback this spell, Thrix will reduce it and it can't be counted. So flashback for one and a blue. That is so... Isn't that cheeky? I tried to find more cheeky. stuff like that, but there really isn't anything. That is super cheeky. Yeah, it's pretty sweet. And Narset says, oh, you can only draw one card. So they end up with one, one, and one, and you have seven. Man, Think Twice flashes back for three mana. This flashes back for two? It's even better than Think Twice. <laughs> what if Think Twice was Time Twister? <laughs> I, I don't know. If it would be better or worse, it's hard to say. I mean, it is hard to say. This, oh, wait, wait. The Nanbo, before someone's going to say the Nanbo, I'm going to get ahead of you. Yes, I know the Immortal Sun and Narset don't work together. She's the only Planeswalker, and she can single-handedly win the game and by single-handedly main with another card. It doesn't even matter. The Immortal Sun's a great card Plus, in this deck. Narset minuses twice and then does nothing. She just sits there. So it doesn't matter if you can't activate her ability. So just play with that and, like, play Immortal Sun always, if you can. And if you have Narset, just wait. It's, it's fine. Also, in the world where you have the Immortal Sun, Narset costs... Blue, blue. Yeah, that's not even so a big of a deal. She's an enchantment for blue, blue that can be killed easier. Half of Notion Thief. Yeah, that's just, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. No, it's, it's totally fine. It's yeah. all completely reasonable. So, so take that, <laughs> hypothetical yeah. commenters. Yeah. Now that I've uh, gotten ahead of that travesty. But that's our, that's our deck. This deck is cool. It's sweet. It plays some of my favorite spells. I mean, this took wild to brew. I haven't talked about Amanatu's Ugly in a long time. I forgot how much I love that card. I just love that card. You stopped playing it. I just you fell away from it. My bullet deck is just like sitting there. It's just sitting here. It's yeah, it's been gathering dust for such it's a long time. Because you need a theme. If you go generic, it's not fun. It was Can't fun. Do it. No, no one. It was fun for me. Man, no Joel one liked said it. how much he hated that deck. I love that deck. No one likes playing against it. I was fine with it. Uh, I just don't like the card expropriate. <laughs> but special shout outs to our thirty-five patrons. Oh, we're we, so close to fifty. We love you all as much as we can, without making you uncomfortable. It's great. Uh, you guys are so awesome. You help support the channel. You get us going. Keep it up. Uh, if you don't, if you would like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash user slash nitpicking nerds. 
Or if you don't want to support us there because you don't like doing monthly fees, you can go to buymeacoffee.com. It's a virtual chip jar. You can support us there. Just Couple like bucks, three bucks, six bucks, that's a dollar, sure. That's the guy who gave us the idea for this deck. Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, we're doing it. What's his name again? Oh my god, Austin Blankenship. I'm terrible with names. Like it could, it would have to be on the screen in front of me because I'm not, I don't remember anyone's name. I'm sorry. I'm the one who cares. I'm the caring one. BZ cares so much. Uh, but if you it, still <laughs> don't want to give us any money, that's totally fine because watching is more than enough, more than we ask for. So we just need, if you want to buy cards though, you go on a TCG player. Well, you might as well use the link in the description and then we get a little bit money sauced our way from TCG yeah, player. No, no matter where that link takes you, if it take, if this, in this case, they'll take you to this deck. You'll see this deck. You can buy the cards in this deck. But if you want something else, let's just say, you want a foil gas cradle. That's what you're feeling. You're feeling foils gas cradle. If you go through the link, it'd be so much appreciated because we get that kickback. Be like, that'd be like a twenty dollar kickback. That would feel good. That would maybe I should buy that gas cradle that I need. I need to play that. I get some of the money back. <laughs> Soften the blow. Uh, yeah. So, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, tidbit about our life because like five people have said they want tidbits about our life. You got one this time? Yeah, I got one. Um, actually, a little personal. We, but, well, I mean, why not? Hit him. Let's uh, go. I mean, I'm, I'm just, just excited to what, what is it? Oh, I mean, I'm just gonna, I was just going to say, we've missed a few videos. We've been off a bit. I deal with serious depression in my life, and it's been causing issues. Up, I've been up and down mood-wise, so we've been missing a video here and there, and that's the reason. I figured we're, I would. We're trying to stick to two or three a week. We're still, like, we're not on schedule, but we're keeping the basic. We want to do two or three a week. We, we want three a week, but right now, two has been more reasonable for how I have been feeling. I figured I'd share that with you guys. The next tidbit will be much cheerier. At least 10% cheerier. <laughs> uh, peace out, Travis Scout.